I'm uh, Ethel Marsh. I joined the, the Navy in uh, 1957, September, September 9th. And, uh, but most of my time was reserve time. Got you. And I was, uh, I finished up. My active duty time was uh, done by um, February 1959, I think. I joined the reserves like 13 or 14 years later. And most of the time in the reserves, uh, up to 24 years, most of that was reserve time. I'm Linda Gilstrap, I was in the U.S. Army, regular and reserve. Joined in October 1977 for the regular army. Wow. Um, 1985, I think, for reserves. Wow. And let's see. Uh, I, then they had delayed entry. Uh, I guess mm. they still do. I joined in July and ended up leaving in October. Mm. And went to the South. <laughs> Alabama. Was it Fort Rucker? Fort Rucker. Fort Rucker. <laughs> aviation. Total aviation now. Yeah, that's what that's where I went because I became an uh, aircraft mechanic. Uh, for me, it was uh, my sense of adventure mm -hmm. and to finish my education because uh, I could get benefits for education, and uh, that that's about it. I just wanted to uh, see other parts of the country as well as the world. That's why I joined. Mm -hmm. yeah, for me, I was thinking about college, but it was too expensive. And then I decided I wanted to fly, so <laughs> I went to the military. I didn't want to go in the Navy because they just started putting women on ships. Wow. And the Air Force wouldn't take me. I didn't want to go Marine, so I went Army. To be honest with you, I didn't. I knew about the history mm -hmm. of women in the military. Some, not not exactly everything, but um, that wasn't. I didn't think about that when I enlisted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But after learning about all these women that went ahead of me, they sort of uh, made it kind of easy for me mm -hmm. to be accepted. So. Uh, I appreciate them. I was, the a, I was a Navy brat, so I was used to uh -huh. uniforms and moving. <laughs> Had that experience. And having an ID card and mm -hmm. going to the hospital, you know. But um, I never thought about it until I wanted to fly. Mm -hmm. And then I started looking into it. But that's why. Mm -hmm. And that's when the first time they told me women don't fly. Mm. <laughs> mm. That's the first time. My basic training at the time, uh, it was like going to school. Mm, okay. I, we went to school. Uh, we learned ships in air, mm -hmm. how to identify them by the shadows. We learned Navy history, of course, mm -hmm. and um, I don't. For some reason, I don't remember the other courses, but there were some. And and I was on the drill team. Oh, okay. That was it. We didn't we didn't use any weapons. Mm -hmm. We didn't stand watches, which people will understand when I say watches. Mm -hmm. We were just told to um, be ladies oh. and look sharp in our uniform. My boot camp experience, uh, we were the last women in Bainbridge, Maryland, and we were trained besides the men. Wow. The men were, the men left before we did, but we uh, uh, trained beside them. Be, be, we were kept separate. Mm -hmm. And we couldn't look, like you couldn't look this way or that way when you're mm -hmm. at attention, you've got demerits. And when we ate in the chow hall, mm -hmm. the guy served us. Wow. You were not allowed to speak to them. And, uh, well, you were not allowed, uh, well, we couldn't, 
fraternize with the guys. You couldn't even say good morning mm -hmm. in boot camp mm -hmm. to the guys. But young people, they find a way. Sat down, you had 20 minutes to eat, mm. total. Mm. When you sat down, you were not to speak to anyone, you were just to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, only when you got up, you could go get more food. And uh, some of those girls could eat three helpings in that 20, <laughs> in 20 minutes. minutes. Yeah, Impressive. yeah. It, it was amazing. It was, it was such an education for me. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I, I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I, I appreciate having that education and learning about different people to this day. I was there 12 weeks because uh, the captain wanted to have this production, <laughs> this musical production, and uh, for, I don't know, uh, Admiral or somebody. Mm. So we were picked. We, we, we were told in our class to stand up and sing whatever came to mind. Mm. And I sang, row, row, row your boat. <laughs> so after everybody sang, our instructor says, these named who, would, who she picked, who mm -hmm. they decided. Mm -hmm. And we were in this Susquehanna holiday, that's what it was called. Mm -hmm. It was like a, a show, mm -hmm. and it was guys in the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, we toured Philly. Wow. We came, we stayed in uh, where George Washington spent, uh, uh, he, where he, he, he stayed there for some reason, I, mm -hmm. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. And that was the first house I had been in where the fireplace is in the middle of the house. Wow. And everything's built around the, the house. And we, and we uh, entertain whoever we were supposed to entertain. And I guess, I guess that captain got some <laughs> merits or <laughs> credits or something. <laughs> but it made us uh, stay in boot camp longer. Because oh, wow. when we went back, we had to finish up where we left off. But we got a letter of appreciation in our jackets wow. about being in this Susquehanna presentation. Mm -hmm. And it was about sailors. What I remember most, we sang the song, What Do You Do With a Drunken Sailor? Mine was nothing like that. <laughs> no drunken sailor. No, we had no rifles, singing. we stood watch, mm -hmm. we camped, we went to the field. Wow. And you were, this was alongside 77. your male counterparts? Or? Yes. Wow. We had separate barracks, but mm -hmm. they were there. Yeah. And uh, we had to do PT. Mm -hmm. But I, I remember getting, because and I went to basic in Alabama and they had that red clay and I remember getting clay all over me mm. in, into my long johns even in my shoes and everything because mm. <laughs> I had to be in a foxhole when it was raining mm. but um, we had to qualify with our weapons mm -hmm. had to qualify with our gas masks mm -hmm. had to pass PT before then women didn't do that they did what she did mm -hmm. Then in the 70s, they decided, well, everybody's going to be the same, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I think the Marine uh, uh, women went with the men because we had uh, a Marine in our barracks, and she just thought we were just, what, what do you say when we have it easy? You don't know <laughs> what it is. Because they, <laughs> went to, they, they went to boot camp mm -hmm. with the guys then, mm -hmm. even when I was in it. Really? Yeah. So, yeah, so they had to, to learn a lot. Yeah, so to, to her, we were, we just went to a finishing You had school. it easy. Yeah. yeah. Well, when she, when she approached me and that's what she wanted to do, I says, okay, if that's really, I, I wanted her to go to college, of course, mm -hmm. but if that's what she really wanted to do, I said, okay, and I, I signed the paperwork. Yeah. I wore bell bottoms, so it was nothing for me. It wasn't, nothing new. It wasn't, no, nah, it just was green instead of blue. There we go. <laughs> oh, oh, but that wasn't your dress uniform, was it? I, I, my dress uniform is what was exciting for me. Mm -hmm. In boot camp, it was 
Yeah. Dungarees, yeah. we called them dungarees. Mm -hmm. And it was the flare leg, uh, uh, bell bottoms. the bell bottoms that came into style for women. There was velvet yeah. uh, uh, pants, that was the style for women. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, our dress uniform was, that's one of the reasons I had picked the navy. Mm -hmm. I liked the uniform. And I could have picked any any branch, really, if I wanted to. I picked the navy because I like the hat better than I like the other, and I like the color. And and what I worried about when I put on my dress uniform was we had to tie that tie when I was in. Oh, they, they come already done. They're, yeah, they're Velcro they, now. At yeah. least not. yeah, they come already done, and that kind of that made me nervous because it seems like I could never get it right. Mm -hmm. You know. And we had, I had such a sharp company commander. Really? Yeah, she, well, to me, she she uh, reminded me of my grandmother. Because uh. here we are, we had an old lady in our in our company. She was 21. Mm -hmm. That was the old lady. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of us were 18. Yeah. And, you know, and 19, uh -huh. like that. So, so, um, and she, she could, our company commander had been in for years. She was a career, wow, uh, uh, a career sailor, mm -hmm. and she would walk down. She would notice if you if things were out of place. One of those, just like you see in the movies, she would notice. She's talking to you and she's straightening up everything. <laughs> I just I just admired her. Mine is. Mine was more of learning about life and other people. Because um, I was from Chicago and uh, the neighborhood was like a small town. If you, if you live in a city, you live in a neighborhood, it's like a small town in the city. Mm -hmm. and, um, and you have these ideas and things, and, but you meet people that are just like you. Mm -hmm. And they may not even, they don't look like you, they're not the same complexion as you are, but mm -hmm. you have the same ideas, you like the same things, and a lot of times uh, you have the same religion, mm -hmm. so you have a lot in common, you know? So just learning about that, just um, mm -hmm. an education of life. Mm -hmm. And I, I felt that with my children too. They were used to other people. They were Navy brats. Well, yes, that's what I mean. <laughs> if you weren't, you wouldn't have be exposed like mm -hmm. the whole uh, life experience. Plus, they plus we traveled. And I know that was kind of hard on them. Mm -hmm. But my other daughter would. This is what she would say. I knew I was home when I came home and I saw the china cabinet. <laughs> that was her. She knew she was home then, yeah. no matter where that china cabinet was. Basic was the mm -hmm. best thing ever, getting out of basic training. That was the most. And then when I went to AIT, the first AIT, I was glad to get through that. Mm -hmm. Cause that was um, air traffic, or that was mechanic. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to go to the field a lot. Mm -hmm. Then I later changed to air traffic control and I, I didn't have to go to the field as much. She, she says, mom, my nails are staying dirty. I'm gonna to try to be an air traffic controller. What do you think about that? I thought, I just think it's great. I was a, a mechanic for four years. Wow. And then I became an air traffic controller. I was in a general, ser general services maintenance unit. Mm -hmm. So we took care of all the, all the bad ones, the bad crashes and stuff like that. Wow. And we had one one helicopter we called the Hangar Queen had been there since Vietnam. We still haven't fixed it. That one never left the never left the thing. But when we when we had to go pick up crashes and stuff like that, at first I was too young because we had to be 21 to pick up bodies and stuff. Oh, wow. So we that's what we used to do: go pick up crashes and wow. fix them from from nothing up to something or mm -hmm. send them back to the yard things like that mm -hmm. it wasn't a bad job it's not a bad job it's just a dirty job mm -hmm. and you get to work on all kinds of helicopters i got to work on three different kinds of helicopters 
Mm. I learned a lot about aviation because mm. all the little officers were there, avionics, <laughs> you know, fabrication, mm. all that were there. So I knew all the guys, so they all like to show off what they do. So <laughs> I learned a lot from them. Mm -hmm. And I, I was thinking about staying with it until it kept getting dirty. <laughs> My uncle was an air traffic controller. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He, I asked him about it. He said, let the military train you. Wow. And so I let him train me, and then when I got out, I joined the FAA. She calls me, and she says, Mom, guess where I am? <laughs> we, we lived in Toms River, New Jersey at the time. Mm -hmm. She says, I'm in Atlantic City. No way. Yeah. And and uh, because of the strike, yep. they sent the Army... They the sent the, all, probably the military aviation. They had to replace those guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they sent a lot of us around. Wow. And we, I went to Atlantic City for almost a year. Wow. And then after that, I went to Alaska. But um, the strike, I learned a lot from them guys too, because they showed me stuff that we didn't have. Like we didn't have uh, the excellent radar coverage like they had. We didn't have a lot of the mixture of airplanes. We had Air Force, uh, Army, and civilian. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of experience with during the strike. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, I went to Alaska. <laughs> went back to the field. Were separated but we were treated the same because they were in boot camp mm -hmm. but um, I didn't have any problems uh, in that regard mm -hmm. because I, I w became a dispersing clerk I was in an mm -hmm. office now uh, when they when I was stationed in Memphis which was my first duty station which the recruiter told me they wouldn't send me south because I said I'm not used to going south, so we're <laughs> so and, so, and then <laughs> then I had these these guys in school uh, make fun of me, and they were African American guys. Mm -hmm. how, how are you? How are you going to tennis to to Memphis? I said, Well, I'm going to fly in. They don't let African Americans <laughs> fly in. You're going to have to bail out in the cornfield because they didn't because they think I'm ignorant. You know, <laughs> they were making fun of me, mm -hmm. but. Um, I, when I got to Memphis, I went by train anyway. When I got to Memphis, I was the only woman in the military in the office. Wow. I was the only African American woman wow. in the office and the only Catholic in the office. <laughs> I said, Boy, I'm coming in here with three strikes. <laughs> wow. So, um, there were young people in the office. We were all the same age. So to me, um, I always, look, they asked me a lot of dumb, well, I call them dumb questions. <laughs> they, had, they would say a lot of dumb things because they were from Memphis and that was their view and mm -hmm. they hadn't met uh, a northerner of color. Mm -hmm. And they would say things and I would say, oh no, dear, mm. yeah, mm -hmm. that's not gonna be. <laughs> and and sometimes and and I wouldn't be all that nice. I'm I'm just 18, and so I'm talking like they're talking. You know, mm -hmm. you dumb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're saying, "Oh, you're so crazy." I says, "No, I think the Lord sent me here to educate you guys." And my supervisor, my immediate supervisor, just knew I wasn't gonna cut the mustard. Mm. He was older, southern guy. Wow. And, and I was third in my class. I don't know if he knew that or not. But um, when I left, he personally told me that, uh, you know, my, I did a good job and he, wow. and, and he kind of apologized for having those, uh, uh, thinking those thoughts mm -hmm. without giving me a chance just mm -hmm. because I was a little brown kid mm -hmm. that he wasn't used to, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, he didn't say that, but I'm, those are my words. Mm -hmm. But um, that, that was about the only 
and being in Memphis itself to go in the stores and stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, and all of a sudden uh, here's this southern person saying, "You're not from here, are you?" I would say, "How could, How you, could you tell?" <laughs> And that would be on the base in the exchange, because civilians were always mm -hmm. in exchange. Mm -hmm. Me being in a non-female job mm -hmm. both times, mm -hmm. they had to get used to me. And uh, there was seven of us, I think. Yes, yeah, wow. seven of us in the whole unit, seven females in the whole unit. Wow. That were mechanics. Wow. And uh, I don't know, they harassed the hell out of us. You said like the seven female were pretty cohesive with each other in yeah. the unit, pretty tight. Yep. Friendship. Yep. yep. Watching out for each other. Tried to. We all got together, like we all, the stuff that we lacked on with mm -hmm. each other, we tried to work on yeah. to get better. But I, I think I left. I think most of them left. They didn't talk about mental health then, not even for the men. Because mm -hmm. they were coming back from Vietnam. They didn't, mm -hmm. they didn't talk about that yeah. at all. There was there was behavioral health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, it was attached to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So they had it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they promoted it. I met their father coming out of the chow hall. Oh. He came up to introduce himself and I'm with my with my 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 best friend at the time. You always you know, you get a friend. A battle buddy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he comes up, he says, he t he tells me who he is, and he's an E six. And I'm just a E three at the mm -hmm. time, maybe, maybe E two, because I just got there. And he introduced himself, and he says, I'm getting ready to buy that car. And, and, and I'm saying to myself, so what do I care? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, 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 that's how I'm thinking, you know, when he introduced himself. And uh, and that was the first introduction, but my friend is saying, gosh, he's, he's good looking, he's handsome, you know. And, 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 uh, and he was an E6. I says, okay, you know, that's how I took it. And then uh, he comes again. I think I'd see him in the child hall again. He had been watching me in the child hall. And, and I like to dance. That's, that's the only, he didn't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we went on a date. And then we started dating. I think I had some friends. I always had, I always got along with fellas. That's another thing that was an advantage for me. Mm -hmm. Because even in high school, I had guy friends, mm -hmm. you know, and, uh, so I asked some uh, some guy friends, what do you think of this guy, Marsh? Like that. <laughs> of course they said he was okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we started dating and everything and then he he uh, asked me to 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 marry him and I said yes and we knew each other from February to November. The Navy had to give us permission. And then he was 22, I was uh, uh, 18. <laughs> and uh, I had to get permission from the state mm -hmm. because you had to be 21 in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I had to get permission, because I was Catholic, I wanted to get married in the church. I had to get permission from my parish priest and two people who, who knew me that I was a good kid. And then I get sick. And, and uh, I, I fainted, I, I fainted, and so I was expecting. If I never went for an exam, uh, mm -hmm. an examination, mm -hmm. I could have stayed in. Wow. Because there were women who, who did. <laughs> I feel guilty about saying. As long as, if you didn't tell people you were expecting, I don't care how big you got, it was none of their business. And really? the Navy could not put you out. They had to physically examine you. 
Yeah. How does that work? Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it wouldn't have worked for me because yeah. I was out like this. <laughs> well, first one I was out like like this. It was with Kimberly. I was out like this. <laughs> wow. So so it was possible, mm -hmm. but I didn't feel that way to, you know. I really didn't know about that. Maybe if I knew about it, but it worked out because he was worried about leaving me in Memphis because mm -hmm. he was getting orders. And mm -hmm. it worked out I could leave with him. Oh. Yeah, and we ended up in, in San Diego mm -hmm. from Memphis. Wow. Yeah. So, and that was the first time I ever been to California. Mm -hmm. So that was, that was interesting. And, uh, and I wouldn't let my baby get on the floor or in the grass or anything. And, <laughs> and the neighbors the used to say, the neighbors used to say, put that baby down, let her eat some dirt. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of dirt eating in the army. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that was later. <laughs> and you also got pregnant when you were in the military, correct? Yeah, I had a choice. Yeah. I had a choice to stay in it or go in mm -hmm. down. See that it was different then. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing how things Title change. Title nine. Mm. <laughs> and did say Title nine? Yeah. And so you st stayed in. And did where did you have any experience with being pregnant and folks looking down on you at all? Or no, I was you? lucky. I was with I was with a lot of civilians. Mm -hmm. I, I was in the army, but we it was a joint military and civilian unit. And all the guys' wives used to send me food. Oh. So I was like, as big as a house. I looked like the, looked like the men, that men, that uh, ghost and ghostbusters. <laughs> I just had layers of fat oh. everywhere. It was so big. Did you have to when you when you gave birth? Did, were you able to be on maternity leave? And did you have six to take weeks. it six six weeks? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. And I had to do PT until I got six weeks. Wow. From delivery. And when? How soon did you have to go back to PT, or back to your? As soon as I got back, six wow. weeks. And I had to After do extra because I was overweight. <laughs> did you have to take the PT test? Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. I had to do extra because I was overweight. Where? And I was like 132 or something. Where was the station? Where was the station with Tim? Oh, uh, Fort Lewis, Washington. Really, really have to, um, they have to be independent women. Mm. Because you have to make every decision their dad would be gone. They would say, "Well, they're gonna they're gonna be gone four months, but they would be gone nine months." Wow! And I remember um, they he left he left when Linda was five months old, and he didn't come back until she was walking, mm -hmm. until she was a toddler. Wow! And he was worried about her knowing him, because mm -hmm. but I gave her a picture of her dad mm -hmm. that she she put it in her mouth and everything and it got down to like this I said, <laughs> I said where where's daddy and that's what she would go get oh. because it was a picture of him and she didn't hesitate to go to him mm -hmm. you know and there was no facetime or no, email no FaceTime. oh no yeah oh, no. and no, the, and then tape recordings you could not know where the ship was wow yeah they could not tell you where they were Military wise, no matter what what uh, uh, department right. of the military, they they have to be independent women. You mm -hmm. can't be women, needy women, mm -hmm. or um, if you if you are a needy person, you should be around your family. Mm -hmm. uh, we were always stationed. I didn't have family except in San Diego. Uh, my children grew up with my brother's kids because he was in the Marines mm. and he was even gone longer mm. than yeah. their dad. Mm. That's when the vultures come. Mm. Mm -hmm. You got guys, uh, my, they know when the ship is gone. Oh, mm. your ship is on such, your husband's on such and such. They're out to sea. Can I have your house key? Wow. I said, you know, I look stupid, but I'm not. Mm. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. But I mean, they're that 
bold wow. to That's tell bold. you. And and I'm looking, I says, do women really do they would they really give them a house mm. key? But yes, mm -hmm. it's possible. We were stationed in Adak, Alaska. Mm -hmm. My the son next to Linda was born. Mm -hmm. And and that's when we were sent there because their dad had this specialty with arresting gear. He knew how to lay that arresting gear. Now, they're using it in, in uh, airports now. Mm. He learned it. He learned it in the early stages and he knew how to lay it because it weighs tons and it has to be linked. And we were sent there because he had that specialty. Wow. And Alaska is only like 500 miles from Russia at, because on, on the map, you see the Russian bear facing us. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, those planes had to go out without anybody knowing and come in without anybody knowing. Mm -hmm. And that's why we were sent there because when they broke the pins, he had to go reset the pin. Wow. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it would be like three, four o'clock in the morning. He'd have to go wow. reset those because you didn't know if somebody was going to be coming in soon or mm -hmm. you know it was difficult because i had to leave my son for a little while yeah and i got him back when he was about two and a half. Oh, you mean after he came back from us yeah when he came to alaska yeah wow he yeah he stayed he with stayed it. with grandma till mm -hmm. till i got settled in alaska mm -hmm. and uh, i had to re-enlist so i could get housing oh wow <laughs> But um, it worked out fine. He, they had a very good educational system, and they had very good um, daycare mm -hmm. for through the state. So mm -hmm. they helped me pay for daycare because it was very expensive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they even had nighttime. You had a nighttime. The guy was ex Air Force, opened the daycare 24 hours. That's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. somebody who knows the situation. Uh huh. Yeah. You gotta get your kids there before PT. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Before PT, or you might mm -hmm. be gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when I became a reservist, I was an aviation storekeeper instead of a dispersing clerk. You said aviation store? Yes. That's funny. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah it is funny. A little and, bit telling. And, and, it, and, I, and I was in supply. That's yeah. what aviation storekeeper. Mm -hmm. And you, I learned how uh, warehouse layout. It was different from being a dispersing clerk, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, still interesting. I still met interesting people. Mm -hmm. And uh, and learned how to. Try not to judge people mm -hmm. when you first meet them. Try mm -hmm. real hard. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> but um, the first, my first drill weekend, uh, the kids came to pick me up and they drove right past me because they didn't recognize me. Do you remember <laughs> that? I don't think we saw you in uniform before then. Oh yeah, that's true. You might not have. And then they, then they started PT for the reservists. So we didn't always have oh. that. Now you have it every week. Yeah. What? They, you have to meet a requirement uh, for your age and everything. Mm -hmm. I went overseas more when mm -hmm. I was in the reservice. Where went did you to the go? Azores and Rhoda. Wow. At Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And I and and to show you, I learned how to say good morning when I was in Rhoda. <laughs> and. Everybody on the base knew, every civilian knew that I said good morning in their language. Wow. So, I, and I learned how to say thank you. Mm -hmm. The usual stuff that they say is good for tourists to do, that's mm -hmm. what I did. 